Get ready to see some of the most interesting work from some of the most talented young filmmakers around town. You're watching Zoom In. You're watching Zoom In. Zoom In. Zoom In. Now what we're about to show you is going to zoom in to our thoughts, feelings, and opinions about violence. This is a story about violence in our world and the way it affects us. Drugs, gangs, and mindless murder are plaguing the streets of today's society. Violence hurts more people than you. In 1990, uh, my only son and child, Kofi Lester, was murdered in San Francisco. Since that time, my life was completely changed because now there's a void in my life. I figured if he did die, it would be an automobile accident once he started driving. But never in my wildest dream did I think it would ever be gunshot, but it did. I just can't believe you killed me, man. Can't believe you did that. What did I ever do to you? Huh? Answer me, man! Not one gang member is going to write you a letter if you are arrested. Not a one. You know who's going to come to see you? It most likely is going to be your family. It's going to be your biological family. To have dare in my elementary school, yeah. and the police used to come, and all the kids would just run up to the police and be like, "Can you show us your gun? Could you show us your gun? Could you shoot something?" They just care about his gun. They always take out their gun and show us. Little boys like, oh, and all mesmerized by it. They see the good people have guns too, and the bad. So they feel like, oh, good person has a gun, the bad person has a gun. I can have a gun. Where did you go, big bro? Where are the big brothers to set an example? The ones holding our hands, crossing the street, walking the block. The ones who care, the ones who share, the ones who are there. To see the steps, to see the fight, to see the light. Shelter the children, cold in the night. Where did you go, big bro? We need you here, the second shade, to take back our names from grasp, from hate. I got friends that's, feel me, 10, 11 years old that's carrying guns. You gotta explain to your child that it's, it's, not, it's not a toy. You don't just play with it. If you could sell guns to a 10 year old, you could sell guns to anybody. It's money, it's all about money to me. If they, gon', if they can sell it for a price, they, they gonna get their money. You can't stop nobody from getting paid. He's a profiteer, he's making money. Got everybody acting like a dummy. I get 17 cents for every bullet. Come on, little man, find that trigger and pull it. Got you fighting over colors from blue to red. You'll be buying bandanas until you're dead. He's a profiteer. He's making money. Got everybody acting like a dummy. Crack, heroin, ecstasy. From the sale to the overdose, I'm stacking cheese. How many addicts are born each day? I couldn't have done it without the CIA. He's a profiteer. He's making money. Got everybody acting like a dummy. Got a three-day notice and you're feeling frustration? Repeat after me. Gentrification, that toxic air and land you breathe will be a thing of the past once you leave. He's a profiteer, he's making money, got everybody acting like a dummy. Give me all your kids and I'll put them to work. Send them overseas to die in the dirt. Moms and dads keep waving that flag and I'll keep stuffing this money bag. He's a profiteer, he's making money, got everybody acting like a dummy. You see violence everywhere, wherever you go you're gonna have violence. Do you think there are as many non-violent topics as there is violent topics covered in the media? Well, let's see. If you're talking about television news, I haven't counted, but I suspect there are probably more violent issues that are covered than non-violent. However, um, it depends what you think is violent. I mean, you know, in politics, there are certain things that are covered. We have a war going on. 
um, and so that's going to be covered quite a bit. My brother, he went to the military when he was 18, and I was, I think I was like 10. So when he left, I was really sad. He was a nice brother and everything. And when he came back, his whole personality changed. The way he carried himself, the way he talked, it was just, like I didn't know him. I was just like, man, you're so different. He was really strict, and he was just like, like his, the demeanor, his face changed too. I was like, man. I had a brother that went to Iraq. From his experience, he said it was just, it was unbelievable, some of the stuff they saw over there. It really changed his mind about er everything, basically. He's really more strict. He didn't act like that before he left. It really does traumatize, because he really wakes up, he wakes up with cold sweats and, and all sorts of stuff. And like the things they saw, you think it's over, but you never really can tell what's going on in a human being's mind. You're gonna see somebody that looks like somebody that you shot, and you're gonna think that they're against you. He said his baby's really just walking around with bombs on them. And that's, that's, all that stuff is really, like, really happening. Innocent civilians getting hurt, and it's, it's not even worth it. The U.S. really does need to have this oil in order to keep the economy running, but at the same time, this country needs, the, needs to have food and other support. Bush is sitting in that office with his legs crossed or legs up on the desk, eating a hot sandwich and not caring. Go shoot up somebody because, oh, the president say, oh, you gotta go cap him. What they call it? Patriotism. And it's a war I didn't even start. You feel me? Right now, in the mail, I have at least seven letters from the Army telling me to join. I have two from the Navy, three from the Army, and I have like four from the Air Force. I was by my school one time, and then a Navy recruiter came up in, to me and just was like, you should be in the Navy. It's really nice and all that. We will take people like you. You should go to college. Just join the Navy and all that. And he gave me a card and I didn't even think about it because a lot of people risking their lives and they got sons and daughters that they really care about and people just take them away from the sons and daughters. If you was the president and you had two kids, two, three kids, and, and, you, and you was sending people from your state to war and you knew they was dying, would you send your kids? They don't want kids to play with guns and everything, but they're recruiting 18-year-old boys to go to war and have a gun and to shoot people. If you don't want violence, we shouldn't have violence. We should just bring our soldiers home if they don't want violence. We shouldn't have um, military people going around showing them how to use guns or encouraging them to come and join the military. That's violence too. If you want peace, you're gonna have to make, you're gonna have to take a big step and do peace everywhere. When I first came here, we were covering a lot of crime in the Bayview, a lot. Uh, there was a lot going on. Um, and when I first came into the community, I met a couple of different people um, who do uh, have community workshops and, and different things to help people. And I think it's going to change. I think it's going. I think the community members um, have really put a lot of work and time and you know sweat and tears into trying to make it so that the, the area isn't so crime-ridden. But it's going to take young folks like you to make a difference.